Welcome in to the Financial Planning and Game Theory Podcast. I'm your host, Michael Seiss. I love to compete, which is another way of saying that I hate to lose. I used to spend a fair bit of time stewing after a loss, wondering where it all went wrong. But eventually I realized that there were often very tangible answers to that question. There were lessons to be learned from each mistake or stroke of bad luck that led to those losses. Through that process, I've identified that there are inefficiencies in most competitions that offer an advantage to anyone who studies game theory. Each episode, I'll be selecting recreational activities where a competitive advantage can exist and I'll be discussing the ways in which game theory applies to those activities as well as to my career as a certified financial planner, specifically when working with clients to build their retirement plans. Today we'll be discussing the parallels I've identified between retirement planning and Rubik's Cube speed solving. First, let's look at the evolution of cube solving over the years. The Rubik's Cube was invented in 1974 and began being sold publicly in 1977. The original world record was 22.95 seconds, set at the 1982 World Championships. In 2003, that record was broken and reset at 16.71 seconds. In the 15 years that followed, world records have been broken repeatedly, with the current record set at 3.47 seconds. To put things into a better perspective, in 2019, there were blindfolded and feet-only solves both under 16 seconds, each faster than the world record time from 2003 that took close to 40 years to establish. The competitive edge has improved significantly in recent years for those willing to experiment and to apply new discoveries to their speed cubing philosophy. It's now common practice for competitive speed cubers to combine multiple problem-solving algorithms, identifying, recalling, and executing highly complex compound turn sequences in half a second. This algorithm fusion is occurring at a ridiculously high level that was once unthinkable. But the Rubik's Cube is exactly the same. Nothing has changed about it since 1974. In the world of financial planning, critical thinkers are regularly developing creative new strategies to optimize a client's financial future independent of any legislative changes. Examples like tax loss harvesting, donor advised funds, the qualified HSA rollover, and the backdoor Roth conversion come to mind here. But in reality, the retirement planning field has experienced many legislative and regulatory changes in recent years, including the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act of 2018 and two more in the first quarter of 2020. The SECURE Act was implemented in January and the CARES Act in March. Both brought additional complexities and new opportunities for the American retiree. As these new wrinkles are introduced, the planning process must adapt and conform to that new information. The concepts of retiree Roth conversions, required minimum distributions, charitable gifting, and inherited IRAs were all presented with new variables for consideration by the developments we've seen in very recent history. Okay, now it's time for my cubing backstory. I arrived on campus for my freshman year of college, having never successfully solved a Rubik's Cube, though not for lack of trying. I'll never forget the first time I saw a speed solve in person. It's a bizarre and unreal feeling. The fingers are dancing rapidly around this blur of color, twisting and turning in ways that seem far too rapid to be intentional. But then suddenly there's this pause, and you get hit with this rush of realization that each of those movements was calculated and meaningful. Out of nowhere, the nest of blended colors glides perfectly into place. Needless to say, it made an impression on me. In the five months that followed, I celebrated my first solve, which took well over two minutes, as well as my first sub-30 solve, recording a personal best of 25 seconds. I credit that rapid improvement to a friend that I met on my college drumline. His tutelage was meaningful, and without Jason's coaching, I would never have cracked a sub-30-second solve. It's not that I wasn't capable of solving the cube. Anybody can solve a Rubik's Cube. I simply lacked the type of accountability 
instruction, and direction necessary to get the job done myself. Eventually, I discovered that the commitment of time and energy involved in speed solving under 20, 10, or even 5 seconds was just too intensive for me to continue the pursuit. I maintained my interest in the cube, but was prepared to admit that I had hit my ceiling from a skill and ability standpoint, and that was fine with me. I noticed this same realization for many investors. Lots of people have casual interest in their own finances and the geopolitical factors that impact them, but rarely become truly infatuated with the inner workings of the investment markets to the point where they're prepared to actively self-manage their own assets through retirement. This is where a coach or an advisor comes in to introduce the accountability, instruction, and direction many people need to retire well. I'll close with this. The Rubik's Cube was originally advertised as having over 3 billion combinations. More recently, it's been determined that a 3x3 cube actually has 43 quintillion combinations. And for the glutton for punishment intent on truly complicating things, a disassembled cube sees that number spike to 519 quintillion. Having never tallied them up myself, I can't provide a precise number of permutations possible in a single retirement plan. But when comparing the variables involved, inflation, market fluctuation, forecasting future tax burdens, the longevity expectation of two spouses, healthcare history and implied future healthcare expense, support for family member, and any other intangible lifestyle change that might come along, versus a six-sided cube with nine stickers on each side, we might conclude that the complexities of a Rubik's Cube compare to retirement planning as a game of rock, paper, scissors with my three-year-old might compare to the World Chess Championship Tournament. Speed solvers are not faced with opponents who attempt to distract or introduce obstacles. It's a simple race against the clock. This is clearly different in the world of personal finance. Just look at the way the coronavirus unexpectedly cost many American families their emergency funds and much, much more. In conclusion, while there are some differences between the two, my belief is that I exercise the same part of my brain when speed solving a Rubik's Cube as I do when working with a client on building and implementing their retirement plan. The same awareness of variables and the likelihood of probable outcomes are required. Fresh ideas and discoveries are developed all the time, each one drawing us a little bit closer to a new world record solve time and a fully optimized retirement plan. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll talk to you next time. The opinions of the host and guest of this podcast are for general informational purposes only and are not to be construed as specific advice or recommendations for any individual. You should consult with a qualified financial professional to determine what is appropriate for you. The advisors of CFS Inc. offer securities and advisory services through Satara Advisors, member FINRA SIPIC. Satara Advisors is under separate ownership from any other named entity.